Hello, my name is Dr. Stephanie Saucier. I'm a board certified cardiologist, and today we're going to be talking about pericarditis. So let's dive in. What are the signs and symptoms of pericarditis? The most common signs and symptoms of pericarditis include chest discomfort located on the left side of the chest. And a lot of the pain or discomfort that's located in the chest is worse with taking a deep breath in, changing in position. It might feel better if you lean forward, but this pain that, you know, kind of hurts within the chest. And like I said, is worse when you take a deep breath in, but better if you lean forward. Those are some of the most common signs and symptoms of pericarditis. People sometimes ask, why does it get better when you lean forward? And the reason why is because in pericarditis, the pericardium or the sac that surrounds the heart muscle is inflamed. And by moving forward, you're actually displacing, you're just kind of shifting that pericardium away from the heart muscle. And so it doesn't hurt as much because it's not rubbing. What is pericarditis? Pericarditis is inflammation of the pericardium. The pericardium is the sac that essentially sits around the heart or protects the heart. So when this pericardium becomes inflamed for one reason or another, that causes pericarditis. What causes pericarditis? Pericarditis is caused sometimes just idiopathically where we don't actually get to know why it happened. Sometimes it can occur after a viral infection or a bacterial infection. Sometimes it occurs after surgery or manipulation of the heart. So there's a number of ways that pericarditis can occur, but those are the most common ones. Pericarditis is diagnosed a few different ways. So first, we listen to your symptoms. So actually telling us how and why and what type of pain you're having is really important when we're diagnosing pericarditis. Also, there are some diagnostic EKG findings that suggest pericarditis. We also look at inflammatory markers in your blood, such as a CRP or an ESR. We also potentially can look at an echocardiogram. The echocardiogram often can have a little bit of fluid around the heart or within the pericardial space. That's a symptom or something that we look for when we're talking about pericarditis. And we can also do cardiac MRIs to look for inflammation of that pericardium. So those are some of the ways that we diagnose pericarditis. And the most important thing is we make sure it's not something worse or more dangerous for you, such as uh, myocarditis or uh, coronary artery disease. And we wanna rule out some of those big, bad, scary things by doing things such as blood work, EKGs, echocardiograms, and you might need a cardiac MRI. What is the treatment for pericarditis? Well, the treatment for pericarditis really stems on decreasing the inflammation. And so we often use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications in addition to medications such as colchicine as kind of the first line. Now, sometimes patients can get recurrent pericarditis and where we might need to tweak the medications a little bit. This may include aspirin or one of the newer medications such as Arcrolis, which treats recurrent pericarditis. We try to avoid steroids, but some patients, it's the only medication we can use or that we have. And so we may need to use steroids, but again, we try to avoid it because the use of steroids increases the risk of recurrent pericarditis. Now in severe cases, sometimes the pericardium gets thick and causes other complications of the heart and the pericardium might need to be surgically removed if that is severe enough. However, most patients are well treated with medications. What are some additional recommendations your doctor may give you when you get a diagnosis of pericarditis? Well, because pericarditis is all about inflammation, we tell patients it's really important they actually cut back on their exercise and so we want them to do really just mild forms of activity such as stretching, yoga, walking, and avoid heavy exertion for the treatment at least often three to six months when you have a pericarditis episode. So we will tell you to cut back on your exercise and that allows the heart to just really recover and decrease all of that inflammation. Can I prevent pericarditis? The answer is unfortunately a lot of times pericarditis happens sporadically or spontaneously and it's hard for us to really prevent it from happening. The key is that if we identify pericarditis or if you're having symptoms to really get seek medical attention and make sure that you're getting taken care of and looked after and taking the medications that are prescribed for you to help that inflammation. And, you know, unfortunately, people who have had pericarditis once uh, sometimes can get pericarditis again. So again, recognizing those signs and symptoms is going to be really important, but there's really not much you can do to really prevent pericarditis. If you want to learn more, click the link below to download our free heart health guide.